Hello, I'm Marcus Brigstock and we're here at the Hay Literary Festival. I'm here with uh, Richard and David from the National Grid and the Department for Energy and Climate Change. And we have just done a session with the Hay audience looking at energy consumption using the DEC 2050 calculator. Uh, we've answered all, we've tried to answer lots of uh, different questions, but people have tweeted in questions which I'd like to put to you, gentlemen. And the first one here says, the issue is without question grid level storage. This chap uh, says he just heard an episode of Cost in the Earth on Radio 4 about it. Firstly, what's grid level storage? I mean, well, I'll kick off. I mean, grid level storage is, is big stuff. I mean, the, the typical kind of thing is the Norwig Power Station, which is in North Wales. This is a big pumped hydro power station with a lake up the mountain, a lake at the bottom of the mountain. Let the water through, generate electricity. When you've got a surplus of electricity, pump the water back up to the top of the lake again. So okay. big technology. Yeah. And at the moment, we've got four of those in the UK, and the total energy they can store is enough to keep the whole of the electricity system going for about three quarters of an hour. OK. So it's, it works, but it's massive. And quite expensive. It, it, How expensive? More expensive than anything else. So typically, okay. in, in grid terms, we use four things to balance the grid. We move the thermal power generation, the coal and the gas, up and down in its output. Yep. We ask demand to either increase or, or drop off a little bit. And we use connections and links uh, to France and, and the rest of Northwest Europe. And we also use this storage facility. But because of its short duration, um, because of the cost of it, we tend to use the other three technologies a lot more. OK. But we could have more of it. And in the future, if we did have lots of wind on the system, which is something that uh, many people in the audience voted for, yeah. uh, you'll have periods when uh, suddenly there's not much wind for a, a day or for five days uh -huh. at a time. And that means the amount of storage you might need is perhaps a, a hundred times what we've got today. OK. Well, well, just while we're on it, talking about wind, the Hay audience here, quite surprisingly, were strongly in favour of making good use of wind. The aesthetics of wind turbines on and offshore are what upset people. So on grid level storage, I imagine it's a lake at the bottom, it's a lake at the top. It's not monstrous to look at, is it? Well, if you've been walking around Snowdonia, your chances are you may not even have noticed most of it because it's buried under the mountain. I think the challenge is finding those sites and the disruption when you're actually building this is particularly hard to deal with. And uh, The disruption must be huge for something on that scale. Well, and anyone who's sort of my age will remember Blue Peter when they went and filmed this stuff when it was being dug out. It, okay. it is huge. It's very, very big scale. It's a lot of rock. And there are a few more sites in Wales and in, in Scotland where you could definitely put more pumped storage, but maybe the, the way to deliver very large-scale storage is going to be with breakthroughs, with innovation support, giving us different ways of storing energy at very large scale. Methods like compressed air or very large heat stores with reversible heat pumps to turn electricity into heat and back again. Okay. This process with the Hay audience here and using the uh, 2050 calculator has not been about tricking or trapping either of you into saying something or whatever. So I'm going to ask, do you see grid level storage as part of the solution yourselves, but you're not speaking on behalf of your departments here? I, you know, it, absolutely it can be uh, part of the solution, but the key is bringing the cost down. And it could be part yeah. of the solution either by lots of small devices spread uh, in any number of locations, or it could be several small, you know, big scale devices sitting there. So I don't think we need a big or a small thing around storage. What we need is the price of storage to come down for it to be fully viable. I see. But it, it works well in tandem with things like wind power, though, because you end up with surplus and, yeah. and dropping off. Yeah, power. absolutely. Yes, if you want to have a lot of wind and a lot of solar on the system, you're going to need some breakthroughs in storage. Yeah. OK, all right. Well, I, I hope we've uh, successfully answered the questions around grid-level storage.